In this video, I will give you an example of how to solve for the rate law. Solving for the rate law means we need to solve the rate constant and we need to solve those orders of the species. So I've set up just a, a brief example, very generic reaction. Species A reacts to produce species B. And on this side, I've given you just some hypothetical data. So in some hypothetical experiment one, two, three, and four, I begin with a not, this is a not symbol, this just means initial concentration. Notice the units are in mole per liter. And in these four experiments, these are my initial concentrations. And when I run this hypothetical experiment, I can uh, calculate those initial rates, or I measure those initial rates in the reaction. So these are initial rates in mole per liter second. So remember, rates are the change in the mole per liter per unit time. Okay, so in a previous video, I've shown you how to find the rate law. And so the rate law for this reaction is the rate is equal to a rate constant times the concentration of the reactants. In this simple example, there's only one reactant, A. But remember, that reactant, that concentration, is raised to some power. So here, this is what the rate law would look like. Now, we need to complete this. We don't know what N is, we need to go find it. We don't know what K is, we need to go find it. So let's solve for the power first. Okay, how do we do that? So there's a very simple method to do that. The reason we have data is we're gonna use this data to solve for the power. And the way we do that is by a simple method called the method of initial rates. And what we do is we're going to set up a ratio. The rate law is equal to the rate is equal to K, concentration of A raised to the N, over the same thing. And what we want to do is we want to plug in the data into this ratio so that we can solve for n. Now, the reason we do this is because, notice what happens here, there are two unknowns, k and n. Well, we can't solve two unknowns, we need to have just one unknown. So when we set up this ratio, look at what happens. I don't know what k is, but whatever it is, k divided by k, well, that just cancels. And so what we need to do is now we can plug in some data and solve for n. So go ahead and just pick two different experiments. Um, I'll go ahead and pick experiment one over experiment two. So in other words, I'm just going to plug in the data for experiment one and then plug in the data for experiment two and that will allow me to solve for n. So for example, right here, in experiment one, the rate is 5.98 mole per liter second. Now, I'm going to leave the units out in this example because if you start plugging in all the units, you know, it gets a little messy. Let me just work with the numbers first. The case cancel, the concentration of A for experiment one is 3.0, and that's raised to the N. Let's divide that by experiment two. Again, you can pick any pair of experiments. I'm just gonna pick one and two. So the rate for experiment two is 2.66, is equal to 
the concentration of A in experiment 2, 2.0. And that's also raised to the N. So at this point, it's just a little bit of algebra. 5.98 over 2.66. This gives us a ratio of 2.25. There's an interesting math trick here. 3.0 raised to the n divided by 2.0 raised to the n. We can rewrite this as 3.0 over 2.0, and all of that is raised to the n. And so this ratio here, 3.0 divided by 2.0, that's the same thing as 1.5. So let's rewrite that. 2.25 is equal to 1.5 raised to the n. Now here we just go ahead and solve for n by inspection. Um, n equals 0. Anything raised to the 0 is equal to 1. So clearly n cannot equal 0. How about n equals 1? 1.5 raised to the 1 is 1.5, so that doesn't work. So n cannot equal 1. 1.5 squared, 1.5 raised to the 2, is equal to 2.25. So here, n equals 2. And so by using this method of ratios or comparing experiments, we're able to solve for the order with respect to a, n equals 2. So let me go ahead and rewrite that here. The rate is equal to some rate constant times the concentration of a raised to the 2. So we can say that the reaction is second order with respect to my A species. Okay, so this is my rate law. Now, let's go find the rate constant. So I'm going to move up here. Now let's find k. Whoops, sorry. Let's find k. Now, let me rewrite the rate law. And how do we solve for k? Well, let's get k by itself. So pretty simple task here. Let's just divide both sides by a squared. And of course, a squared over a squared, this side just cancels. And so you can see that k is equal to the rate over the concentration of a squared. Now, an important note on the rate constant. If you look at the rate law, remember the rate constant is this multiplication factor. In other words, the rate law tells us how the rate is dependent on the concentration of the reactant. Here, the dependence is an exponential dependence. It's a, a squared. But whatever this number is, we multiply by this multiplication factor, k. And it's a rate constant. So no matter what experiment you do, if I go back here to show you, no matter what experiment we do, that k never changes. So you can pick any experiment and go solve for k. Um, and I'll show you that this is true. You can pick any, any experiment. Let's try experiment one. In experiment one, the rate is 5.98, and the initial concentration is 3.0. So the rate 
5.98. Now for the rate constant, the units are very important. So I'm gonna write the units over here just to give myself some room. The rate is mole per liter second. The concentration of A is 3.0 squared. Don't forget that square there because this reaction is second order with respect to A. The units for the concentration are in mole per liter. Don't forget, the units are also squared. So if you look at the numbers first, 5.98 divided by 3 squared, which is 9, we get an answer of 0 0.66. This is the rate constant. How about the units? We have mole divided by mole squared. So you can imagine that this top mole will cancel one of those denominator moles. We have liter divided by liter squared in the denominator. So liter will cancel one of those liters. And this liter in the denominator of the denominator will go up to the top. So the units are liter per mole second. Okay, now let's prove that. Let's prove that this is a constant. Look at, for example, experiment four. In experiment four, the initial rate is 10.6 mole per liter second. And the initial concentration of A is 4.0. So my rate constant, 10.6 mole per liter second, whoops, sorry, divided by 4.0 squared. And don't forget those units are also squared. So the units are the same. So for these second order uh, reactions or second order with respect to that species, you'll always have these units here. But if you look at the numbers, 10.6 divided by 4 squared, which is 16, you get 0 0.66. Okay, so let's recap. So I give you some generic equation. The rate law looks like this. It's dependent only on the reactants. Here, there's only one reactant. Using the hypothetical data, we used experiment one and two. We set up these rate law ratios. So the ratio of the rate law for experiment one over the rate law for experiment two and we did that so that we can solve for our order of the reaction. Here, the order is second order with respect to A. And because there's only one reactant, the overall react, uh, order is two, second order. Now that we know the order of the reaction or the order of the reaction with respect to A, we can go solve for K. K is the rate constant. You can use any experiment because remember the rate constant is constant. So you could have picked any experiment and solve for K and you would get the same answer.